really great tool. Yeah. Oh, you good? It's okay. I, it's he's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is dangerous, Mike. That's what you think. <laughs> um, well, good afternoon, everyone. It's wonderful to see so many people here and wonderful to have everyone here as we sign a really innovative and important piece of legislation that's going to make a real difference for Massachusetts. This legislation is going to increase what has already been a historic amount of federal funding to our state. And I'm just so grateful to everyone who worked so hard to get this done, to all the folks on our team, starting with our fabulous Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Uh, we really, really appreciate the work of our entire cabinet, don't we? I mean, Absolutely. you guys have done an incredible job. And I want to thank in particular our uh, ANF Secretary, Matt Gorkowitz, uh, for his work. Uh, director Quentin Palfrey, who you'll hear from, who's the director of our federal funds office, and the entire federal funds and infrastructure team. Um, delighted that we're joined today also by our Secretary of Transportation, Monica Tibbetts Nutt, our Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe, our Undersecretary of Economic Development, Sarah Stanton, our Undersecretary for Energy and Environmental Affairs, Catherine Antos. Um, head of our Mass Tech Collaborative, Carolyn Kirk, and Assistant Secretary of ANF, Heath Fowley, is with us as well. Um, we've got a great team and people have been working really hard across the board in, in our administration. None of this is possible without the great work of our legislative colleagues. And I want to thank Chair Michaelowitz, Chair Rodericks, and their teams, Speaker Mariano and Senate President Spilka. In particular, I want to thank Representative Jack Lewis, who convened the hearing on this very piece of legislation. So really appreciate your work, Mr. Chair. We're joined by members of our business community, our labor community, key partners, all of you, in winning, in applying and successfully winning these funds. Uh, Rich Marlin from Mass Building Trades, Joe Byrne for the Carpenters, just to name a few, Tom Ryan at A Better City. Um, thank you so much to all of our partners out there for the work that you've done with us, and thank you for the work that I know we're going to continue to do together. So here's what this is about. When we started 20 months ago, we said that we were going to make federal funding a priority. We were going to do everything that we could as a team to chase and maximize the chance for every federal dollar coming back to our state. And to do that, we set up for the first time ever an Office of Federal Funds and Infrastructure headed by Quentin Palfrey. Quentin built a terrific team that worked across the administration and then, of course, with partners outside of the administration to submit um, time after time successful applications. We saw the tremendous opportunity created by the Biden-Harris administration and important pieces of uh, legislation, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, the Inflation Reduction Act, the Chips and Science Act, and so much more. This is unprecedented levels of federal funding made available through the Biden-Harris administration. And we viewed it as our responsibility and our opportunity to go out there and maximize Massachusetts's ability to bring home these dollars working uh, with partners. So we created this new office and we have been getting results. To date already, we've brought back more than $8.6 billion in federal funding. That includes more than $4.2 billion in discretionary grant awards that we went out and competed for. In transportation alone, I'll just note a few things. $1.7 billion for the Cape Cod Bridges, our biggest bridge award ever. And I also want to shout out Roger Brunel, my labor advisor who has liaised with the labor community on all of these successful applications. And that one is going to include a PLA. So $1.7 billion for the Cape Cod Bridges, uh, $335 million for the Alston Multimodal Project, which will relieve congestion and open up all sorts of economic uh, development opportunities in Boston and Cambridge. Over $100 million for the West East Rail, and just yesterday, $472 million for the drawbridge at North Station. This is a big deal um, because this is going to improve the commutes of over 11 million passengers on our commuter rails. You guys know the, the rails right up behind North Station, everybody coming in and out of the city, all the ball games. Uh, imagine what that's going to do over there. It's going to completely change commuter rail and Amtrak services. It's also the biggest federal award that the MBTA has ever received. 
Now, a better city, thank you, tracks how we're doing in this race for federal infrastructure funds. They've got a new report coming out. You know, Massachusetts, a little more than a year ago, um, as we were starting, Massachusetts was ranked 34th in the country in total federal infrastructure funds. Today, a little over a year later, we have moved from 34th to 7th, and we're not going to stop there. Um, keep in mind that we're a population that is 16th in the country and uh, 45th in land area. So we're, we're small, but we're mighty, and we're punching way above our weight when it comes to chasing and getting federal funds. Um, we're also not a team that's going to rest on our laurels or take the foot off, uh, off the gas here. And so we're going to continue to pursue funding. And what we're doing with this legislation makes that possible. We're doing something today in Massachusetts that no other state has done. This law will maximize our federal funding wins at no risk to the taxpayer. It's really, really important. We want to take care of taxpayer money. We want to use it and invest it wisely. And we can now make sure that when we apply for programs, federal funds, that require matching funds, that we're, we have that money available and that we're getting the most possible money back from the federal government. And these funds are going to be used on a range of projects, um, like some of, of what we've talked about already. Also, importantly, they're going to be there to provide technical assistance to our cities and towns uh, who need to win federal funds themselves. And this is going to help do that. And that kind of state-local partnership has been something that our administration has really valued and been about. So in the end, this is going to be better transportation, cleaner environment, uh, better infrastructure, better results for our residents and our businesses. Uh, beyond transportation, I'll also note that we've secured record funding for clean energy and climate action. I say this, um, here we are at Climate Week. $389 million uh, we've brought back already to modernize the electric grid across New England. $156 million for solar power in low-income communities, $100 million for heat pumps, which provide clean electric power uh, to homes, and $147 million to improve Internet access statewide, $92 million in CHIPS funding through the Northeast Microelectronics Coalition Hub, hundreds of millions of dollars for medical R&D because we won the Investor Catalyst Hub of ARPA-H. So I think it's a great record, um, and that's happened in a relatively short amount of time, 20 months, so kudos to the entire team and all the partners who worked with us, not just in putting the office together, but in going out and making sure that we were submitting the very best in terms of applications. So we know that with this new tool in our fiscal toolbox, we're going to put Massachusetts in an even stronger position to win. And now I'd like to invite Secretary Gorkowitz uh, to say a few words, and I want to thank him and members of his team for all of their work. Oh, great, great. And before, the, you are important, and we're going to get to you, but I want to say also our good friend Adam Chapdelaine, you're probably going to shout him out from Mass Municipal Association. <laughs> I can't see you in the back there. Yeah. Thank you so much for your partnership. And we were talking about the funds coming to cities and towns. We were talking about you and your members. Well, um, thank you, Governor. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, uh, for your leadership on this issue. Um, and to Quentin and his team for the work they have done to pursue federal funding opportunities. Also, a big thank you to Treasurer Goldberg and her team, who worked closely with us as we developed this plan. And of course, to the members of the House and Senate, including conference committee uh, members and leadership, for their efforts to bring this bill signing today. Thank you. From day one, this administration has approached the opportunity of unprecedented levels of available federal funding with a sense of urgency. With over $17 billion in federal grants out there for us to compete for and win, we knew we had to be aggressive, and we have been. Even as we worked with our partners in the legislature on this bill, Massachusetts has been winning, bringing in billions of dollars in federal funding that will support our infrastructure, job growth, and our economy. With this bill, we send a clear message to Washington that we are serious and ready to compete for those dollars. The creation of the new Capital Investment and Debt Reduction Fund would allow us to use up to $750 million over the next three years to expand the state's capacity to allocate match, match funding to satisfy the requirements of many federal grant programs and to cover a proportion of the proposed project cost. 
An FY24 loan interest on our robust stabilization fund generated $421 million that we can use for state match to ensure our applications are as competitive as possible. To be clear, we are only using the interest of the fund. We do not touch the corpus of the fund. As it stands, our stabilization fund is set to close fiscal year 24 at roughly $8.8 .8 billion after accounting for the closeout SUP that we recently filed, which makes an additional deposit into that fund. These funds will also be available to our municipalities and other quasi-agencies that may lack sufficient capacity of their own to come up with the matching funds to secure federal awards. To help with this, the bill also includes $12 million for local government technical assistance to help municipalities successfully apply for federal funding opportunities. This piece is critical to ensuring our smaller communities that might lack staffing or technical expertise to compete for these opportunities and craft applications that don't miss out. We have already committed millions to support infrastructure in City of Bedford, microelectronics, and wireless supply chain. We have more committed through pending applications to support microchip manufacturing and digital equity. The other benefits of this legislation that should not be overlooked is the flexibility this creates within our own capital investment plan to pursue other projects and initiatives around the state. By creating this pool of matching funds, we no longer have to carve out space in our capital plan for match, or worse, let opportunities pass us by. With the state match covered, we can move forward with other critical investments in housing, climate, infrastructure, uh, without worrying that we are leaving federal dollars on the table. Over the next three years, we look forward to showing how the interest on the stabilization fund can be put toward transformational uses while continuing to grow the underlying balance of the rainy day fund. This approach to using investment earnings can be a model that, we, that will pay dividends in years to come. Thank you, and I'll now turn it over to Quentin Pelfrey. Thank you so much. Thank you, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Gorkowitz, Secretary Tibbetts Nutt, Secretary Howe, Chair Lewis, and other colleagues. It's so great to look around the room and see so many friendly faces. Um, I also want to make a special thank you to our team at the Federal Funds and Infrastructure Office, Bob LaRocca, Roger Brunel, Michaela Leonardo Paredes, Sam Fritz, Mallory Strain, Mehar Jauhar, Amy Anation. I'm so grateful for the work that you do every day to advance the priorities of the Healy Driscoll administration. And a special thank you to my own family, my father, Sean Palfrey, my mom, Judy Palfrey, my daughter, Serena, and my wife, Anna, are here with us today. Um, there, there will never be a better time to invest in infrastructure in Massachusetts. Since the beginning of the Biden-Harris administration, the federal government has committed more than a trillion dollars to transportation, clean energy, and cutting-edge technology. Collectively, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, Inflation Reduction Act, and Chips and Science Act reflect the largest investment in history as, uh, in climate, as well as unprecedented resources for economic development, internet for all, semiconductors, and sorely needed improvements in roads, bridges, trains, and water infrastructure. From her first day in office, Governor Healy has been committed to competing aggressively for these historic resources. Last year in this very room, Governor Healy signed an executive order creating a new office to lead a whole of government strategy to compete for federal funds. And we're already seeing results. Working closely with the Biden-Harris administration and our terrific federal delegation, we've brought in more than $8.6 billion to Massachusetts since Governor Healy took office fueling ambitious projects like the Cape Cod Bridges, the Alston Multimodal Project, West East Rail, the North Station Drawbridge, solar for all, geothermal heat pumps, grid modernization, cutting edge research into semiconductors and life sciences, high speed internet, electric school buses, and much more. With today's first in the nation federal funds bill, we're just getting started. With the leadership of Governor Healy and unanimous support from the legislature, we now have more tools than any other state in the nation to compete for federal funds. Last year, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll joined the Federal Funds and Infrastructure Office to launch the Massachusetts Federal Funds Partnership 
to engage with cities, towns, tribes, environmental groups, and our partners like the MMA and the regional planning agencies, from the Berkshires to the Cape and the Islands on transportation, clean energy, water, and economic development needs. Our community partners are really excited about these new opportunities, but particularly in the rural areas and our gateway cities, our communities need more support to navigate the thicket of acronyms and jargon, federal government silos, as well as more resources to compete for federal funds and to finance critical local projects. By leveraging the interest on the State Stabilization Fund to create a $750 million pool of state matching funds, today's legislation will supercharge our federal funding applications and give us the resources to provide game-changing grants, loans, and technical assistance to cities, towns, tribes, and community partners. This is a fiscally responsible use of taxpayer dollars because each dollar we provide in state matching funds will enable us to multiply the federal dollars we receive in return. The Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, the Inflation Reduction Act, and Chips and Science Act provide a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to invest in Massachusetts' future. We're committed to securing each and every dollar available to Massachusetts and putting them to work in communities across the state. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, thank you so much, Quentin. And uh, really, I, I just uh, thank you because when you agreed to come on board the administration, you said that uh, this is something that you really wanted to, um, to, to have a vision for and organize and implement. And you have just done an incredible job with your team and we're just so grateful to all of you for the work and it's it's an amazing record amazing results and uh, and i know more to come so thank you so much um i i appreciate that and uh speaking of team two i'm really glad we have jonathan Trigg with us who is uh, from our climate office again this is a whole of government approach really uh, important work on a lot of applications and darlene lombos the greater boston labor council thank you for the partnership um, as well, and we also thank the AFL-CIO, Chrissy Lynch, and team uh, for their work on our applications as well. Um, with that, ha we're happy to take any questions on topic. Governor, could you talk a little bit about the other purpose of the fund, which is to, to pay down state debt? Yeah, sure thing. Why don't I turn that over to you? Sure. The, the establishment of the fund allows for more than just matching federal dollars. It does allow for debt reduction, um, which can come in many forms, um, outright paying down debt as well as defeasance of debt. Um, that's something that we'll look at once we feel like we've secured um, all that we need to pursue with respect to federal opportunities. Uh, so it's not something we're looking at now, but it's a flexibility in the tool that I think will um, live, um, live on beyond our, um, our, our three-year period by which we're um, securing federal match. I think it's just the, the results of the work of the team. I mean, um, and I really credit um, Director Palfrey and Secretary Gorkowitz and folks across our administration who work together to make this happen. And I, I think what's proposed um, and grateful and, and, and enacted, and I'm grateful to the legislature for this because um, the LG and I think this is really smart, really smart legislation, a uh, really smart move by our state because it puts us in a position to maximize the opportunity to bring federal dollars back into the state, which people want, right? To, to, to fix transportation, to, to improve infrastructure, uh, and to build out in the way we need to going forward. So I really credit, um, credit it to the, the work of our teams, our partners um, in submitting these applications, and the focus and uh, intentionality, intentionality and, and effort that our teams across the administration are bringing to these funding application opportunities. Certainly as governor, I'm gonna be the first to brag on the state, I'll be the first to go to DC, I'll be the first to pick up the phone and, uh, and ask for money, right? But at the end of the day, unless you um, submit applications that meet the moment, that show them to be, um, uh, not just qualified applications, but really 
uh, well done applications, you're not going to get those federal dollars. And so I credit the team. I'm also grateful to the congressional delegation for their work uh, on behalf of all of us. But you've obviously done a lot of work. The Biden and now Harris, and how much are you leveraging that? How much are you leveraging the way this work is done? You know, um, I think this is, again, really the product of the work of the teams. Um, uh, because, you know, the, the liaising really takes place at the secretariat level, um, working with the analogs, uh, secretaries, and, um, and members of their teams across the federal administration. Um, certainly, I never pass up an opportunity to uh, plug Massachusetts if I'm in conversation with the president or with the vice president. Um, and I always plug Massachusetts when it comes to uh, my conversations with the secretaries. But you know, a lot of the work of government, as you know, it's happening with people uh, here and uh, people who, who work up and down um, the, these agencies, state and, and federal. But you know, I will say this, um, what, uh, what President Biden and Vice President Harris have done in terms of their vision for funding has been unbelievable. Um, the legislation that they were able to get passed, um, the amount of money that they've gotten out to states and municipalities around the country has been remarkable. And I just really appreciate it. Uh, we are trying to make the most of it here. Governor, uh, no doubt politics plays a role in federal funds. We have a Democratic governor, Democratic delegation in Washington, and a Democratic president. Um, how much of a push is there in the next four months to get as much out of Washington as we can with the uncertainty about whether there'll be a Democrat in the White House next year? Well, I, I, I think that things are separate. Um, you know, look, I'm going to continue to campaign as hard as I can for Kamala Harris, who will be a great leader, a great commander in chief, and a great president for not just the people of Massachusetts, but for America. Separate apart from that, um, you know, our job every day is to bring it and make sure that we are <laughs> as quickly as possible submitting applications, um, hopefully winning applications, and then getting money out the door. And so that doesn't change with an election cycle. That's always our, our mentality. And, and that pace, that urgency, um, that intentionality is, is certainly going to continue. Um, and, and it doesn't have anything to do with the election cycle as much as it has to do with what we see as the needs here in the state and our desire to make things happen and get stuff done as quickly as possible. I, I don't know enough about federal funding, Mike. You know, I wore a different hat. I can tell you that there were a lot of residents. There were a lot of uh, people in Massachusetts. There were a lot of families. There were a lot of businesses. Um, there were a lot of organizations. There were a lot of colleges and universities, teaching hospitals, uh, research institutions that were absolutely hurt by the former president. And it's one of the reasons I'm campaigning so strongly for Kamala Harris, because having lived through the Trump years, Barely, um, and I don't say that jokingly. You know, as Attorney General, having to bring suit after suit to protect people's access to health care, to voting, um, uh, to, to to so much. Um, you know, we, we can't go can't go back. Are there any other questions on this? Because you've got the experts <laughs> right here. Okay, it was that clear. Okay. I'm grateful to Attorney General Campbell for that appointment. Um, he appears to be a highly experienced and respected prosecutor, and I'm sure he'll assemble a team and do the work. From the beginning, I have called for an investigation of uh, this tragic death, um, and uh, it, it's something that we owe to um, uh, Mr. Delgado Garcia's family. Um, the public also deserves answers as well. So I applaud that decision and I'm, I'm grateful for that decision. And I hope that that investigation proceeds uh, promptly. Governor, so you, could you share a little bit about what you talked with the governor's manager about in terms of being your way to Brazil? Can you talk a little, share yeah. what the politics was about? Yeah, I mean, one of the, one of the things, as, as folks know, look, um, you know, for us is, Look, we are mighty powerful here in Massachusetts, okay? But we are also the 45th uh, uh, ranked state in terms of actual land mass. Um, we've got to work together regionally. And that 
is especially true when you're talking about energy supply and what we need to do. And so one of the reasons that the LG and I were convening with other New England governors and the Eastern Canadian premiers was to have a conversation about energy and how we can work together to do things like build out the grid, build out our transmission lines, and how we can take advantage of one another's energy sources. There's hydro in Canada, there's wind off the coast of Massachusetts, um, there's you know a variety of energy sources across New England and this uh, North Atlantic Eastern region. And so one of the conversations with that I that um, I had with with the um, with the other governors about was what are the opportunities for joint procurement um, of, of various projects. It's one of the reasons that I put in the SUP what I did around permitting and siting and procurement because we need to as a state be able to right now go out and permit and site the infrastructure that we need for clean energy infrastructure and we really need to make sure that we have the ability to procure and compete successfully for projects and that means competing uh, that means procuring jointly with other states as you saw with wind in Rhode Island um, and we hope that Connecticut um, uh, also buys in there and procures when. That's certainly something I've encouraged Governor Lamont to do. Um, but also that we're able to do that with business entities as well. So, you know, that was the spirit of the conversation. Millstone, Millstone's a good example. Um, Millstone is a, is a nuclear power plant in, in Connecticut, and there's an opportunity for Massachusetts to purchase energy uh, from, from Millstone. So, you know, it's, it's, it, there's a nice synergy there, and, and really my goal and our hope, uh, and it's one of the reasons that we did something that hadn't been done before in energy and environmental affairs, was to set up an office and a point person who would work specifically on regional, uh, state and federal, um, uh, uh, relationships so that we can go out and do those kinds of procurements. Governor, do, you, do you support uh, federal, uh, a call for federal uh, investigation into the state grid supply line? Let's let the Attorney General and the appointment of our Special Assistant Attorney General, uh, let's let that investigation go forward. Well, I strongly support Joyce Craig. I've had the opportunity to work with Joyce Craig for a number of years now. Um, she will be great for New Hampshire. She is uh, an experienced leader, having been the mayor of the largest city there. Um, in contrast to Kelly Ayotte, she is also pro-choice. As a former New Hampshire resident, I can tell you um, that that is something that New Hampshire voters believe in. They believe in choice and that freedom. Um, it's obviously going to be a close campaign. It always is in New Hampshire. but. Um, I know that Joyce Craig brings the uh, commitment, the dedication, um, the understanding, having been a chief executive of, of a large city, um, to be able to do that job and do that job incredibly well. She's also focused on things like driving down housing costs, ensuring access to health care, you know, making life more affordable, and protecting choice, protecting reproductive freedom in the Granite State, in contrast to her opponent. Oh, that was a, an incredibly humbling way to begin the day. Joanna and I had the opportunity to visit with the First Lady earlier this morning. She's in town um, uh, speaking this afternoon at, at Harvard. But um, I'll, it was really um, incredible. Um, we had the opportunity to meet her and uh, President Zelensky more recently at a national governor's meeting. And um, every time, whether it's in person or seeing them um, on television, I am just struck by their strength, their resilience, the resilience of the Ukrainian community. We also had an opportunity to invite Ukrainian community meters, me, uh, members into our office this morning um, to see the First Lady. And it's, um, we'll put out some information about this later, but you know, what we, what we did, um, we, pledged our, our, we pledged Massachusetts strong support for the people of Ukraine. And we are here to help. That, is our, that was my message to the First Lady. Um, and it's my message to all of Massachusetts. We've got great organizations in Massachusetts that are working to provide supplies and services to people in Ukraine, as well as to Ukrainian refugees who have settled here in Massachusetts. So we're going to get information out about that. But I encourage people to take a look at that in 
find ways to give um, of their time or um, of their resources to such an important uh, such an important cause, and that is standing for and protecting the freedom, the independence of the people of Ukraine, uh, standing up to dictators like Putin, and uh, being, uh, being the America that, that we should be. So I look forward to opportunities to continue to find ways to support Ukraine. Uh, they are currently very much in the midst of, of, of so much uh, anguish and pain uh, while fighting with such resilience. Um, but about 40% of their students are, are, are not in school right now. Uh, they're learning remotely. That includes at the university level. Um, they're still in the process of building out shelters. Um, they don't have shelters right now for kindergarten students, which is an issue because you've got a lot of kindergartners who are younger children who aren't able to, to um, leave the home. And as a result, parents aren't able to, to, to work either. So there's a lot of work to do, um, but I know that, you know, President Harris, excuse me, President, President Biden and Vice President Harris are very clear about the continued support for Ukraine. I join with other governors in ensuring uh, that support. One of the things we talked about is, um, is, uh, is the opportunity for more partnership between Massachusetts and, uh, and Ukraine and specific regions. Uh, I applaud uh, the work of Governor Shapiro, for example. You saw him the other day with President Zelensky uh, in Pennsylvania speaking to this uh, issue, and um, it's just really important. So it was a, it was a humbling and uh, an inspiring way to, to begin the day. Okay, we got to, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think, uh, look, we were pleased to see um, some of the advances in science and technology. Obviously, we're seeing, I think, the, the pains of COVID when it comes to mathematics and English language arts. And so we have to do more work there. It's why we've been leaning so hard as an administration into education, right? This administration, unlike any other, has, has, funded education at record amounts. And again, I appreciate the legislature for that funding. Um, we were out a couple weeks ago talking about our first of its kind literacy efforts, literacy launch to make sure that we're doing everything we can to help our, our young learners uh, read and read well. The other day I stood with Secretary Tutwiler because we're taking on chronic absenteeism and you know we're making improvements there. So we're gonna continue to invest in our young people and we're gonna continue to invest in education, something that's really important to me and to the LG. Um, obviously, you know, there's, there's work to do. It's, uh, it's why these assessments in MCAS matters, because we're able to, to see how we're doing and see, importantly, what else we need to do to provide resources to our students and to our educators. Anything else? You got it. Okay, great. Thanks, okay, thanks, everybody.